After this video, I will most likely be done with this topic and this whole channel either forever or at least for quite some time. I talked about it in my PSA video, but I don't feel comfortable to keep going with this whole thing. It's been bleeding over into my personal life and as I have GAD, it's been causing me a lot of stress. Since I had literally no subscribers and most other videos I had seen that talked about Taylor had gotten only around 20k views, I didn't expect my video to blow up like it did. Before I talk about Taylor's video, I want to talk about some concerns people have written in the comments of the first video I made. I'm not talking about Taylor's personal life, because I'm nosy or something. I didn't wander into her apartment and started bashing her for everything she does. She has put almost everything in the video out there herself, other than the leaked DMs. I included those because they clearly showed her talking about Johnny joking about flushing a three-week-old kitten. He is an abuser and abusers often hurt their victims' pets. I wouldn't care if she took any drugs if she didn't have 50 lives that depend on her. I agree that talking about those serious topics were overstepping a boundary though, and if I made the video again today, I would probably still include everything I said about Johnny, but I wouldn't talk about her drug issues. I'm sorry for doing that. Now I want to talk about some parts of Taylor's new video. And the person who posted that screenshot literally took it down 20 minutes later and said they had absolutely no proof that that was my friend or that that was true and that they shouldn't have posted something with no proof whatsoever. So it does make me a little upset that those rumors are going around and the same people that started those rumors know for a fact that the person that started the rumor literally said never mind that that didn't happen. I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want the person that sent out these tweets to get involved in the drama again, but I have talked to them and they told me that they didn't take down the tweets because they decided there wasn't enough proof or something. They got harassed by not only Taylor's fans and friends, but also received a mail by Taylor herself telling them to take down the tweets. Neither I nor anyone else knows what's actually happened to the cooked pets or if Taylor makes a habit out of replacing her animals. I don't doubt that it's possible, but I would also like to believe that she wouldn't do something like that. And then with the crocodile skinks, the proof is that I contacted a breeder for two new crocodile skinks. But the thing about that is the breeder posted it publicly that they're sending them to me. So how would I be tricking you guys and replacing an animal, sneaking it, getting behind you so you don't know they're dead, if the person literally posted on their page, I'm sending these crocodile skinks to a new home and then tagged me in it. That would kind of ruin my story that they're the original skinks. It wasn't a hidden, it wasn't hidden. There's no exposing me. We talked about it publicly. I liked it, I commented on it the day it happened. It's all public knowledge. Anyone that was looking at their Instagram notifications would have seen that, or anyone that was following them would have seen that. It sounds weird to me that she acts like she was totally transparent about getting new skinks though. Her explanation is that she never hid it because the breeder tagged her in the photo of the new skinks. But it's not like she said anything about it until now. In my opinion, the breeder might just not have known that these skinks were meant to be kept secret, so they posted them without thinking about it. She might not have replaced them and acted like they never died, but getting the exact same kind of animals hours or days after the original ones passed away just seems weird to me. Everyone grieves differently, yes, and I know that she has talked about shutting off emotionally, but I, personally, can't relate to the way she handles death. Just look at when she's died. She posted a video where she was crying uncontrollably and then the next day she put his frozen corpse on a toy boat and played with it. She was also already talking about getting a new cowfish with her fish sword just hours after he died. In a video that she had filmed before he had died, she mentions that she has never had algae problems. But in the extension crisis video, she clearly says that she has been battling algae for a really long time, so she dosed flucanazole, which ultimately might have killed cheese, as scaleless fish are incredibly sensitive to medication film or an algae coming into the tank that isn't normally there because I normally don't have algae in my tank. My fish tank has a really bad bryopsis problem. I've had bryopsis algae in there for six months, seven months probably. It's little things like that that make her look like, if not a liar, then at least someone that doesn't always tell the truth. At the end of the video, Taylor talks about her mental health issues and admits that she had a time in her life where she accumulated pets very, very fast. I think that's admirable of her to do and I hope that she can figure things out. I also think that she does love her pets, but just because you love something doesn't mean you're able to take care of it correctly. She spends a lot of money and time on her pets, but even that is not enough. I had seen someone do the math on how much time she would have for her pets in a day and it was only around 5 minutes for each individually. Out of the 50 animals she has, a few of them are fish. 
But if you only count the pets that are land animals, then she still has 30 to 35 of them. Rats alone need one and a half hours of playtime with their human. Her monitor should take up around the same amount of time. She also has other animals like her blue tongue skink that would benefit from handling. It's not all just snakes that prefer being left alone. Just because they have fancy custom made enclosures doesn't mean that they are thriving. She has cheap equipment for her reptiles. Almost all of her enclosures are too small and she feeds many of her animals an incorrect diet. They may be alive and she might not have lost any reptiles other than the ones that overheated and the green tree python that she handled even though it was at death's door. But most reptiles are super hardy and they can live in awful conditions for a long time until they die. Moving on to the kittens. Here it's the same thing as with the algae. I know some of you will see that I'm nitpicking, and I probably am, but small parts of the story don't add up, which makes it all seem untrustworthy. I have linked a video that compares her two stories in the description. I, w I want this. Like, I can do this. I'm gonna do it. I would like to take these kittens in, and I would like to raise them and foster them and potentially keep them if they, you know, if everything goes right for them. They were covered in ticks. They were skinny. They were scared. They were tiny. I thought I was helping, you know? I thought if I take care of these guys, that's one less animal someone else has to like foster and take care of that I'm contributing by doing this with my own money. I know that abandoned kittens often die, but I really think that she should have made more of an effort to find someone that has fostered before. I don't think I have ever seen her mention reaching out to give them away to someone that knew what they were doing. If she had called everyone that might have taken them in, then I agree that keeping them is of course better than letting them wither away and die. But from what I can tell, she took them in because she thought she could handle it. It's just irresponsible. My other thing to respond to about the cats is the one that I brought in as a companion for Nemo after his sister passed away. I brought in Ghost. I got him at an adoption event, but people insist that he's this cat from Craigslist. I don't even know what I could say about that anymore. People keep saying that I refuse to respond to that, but I've been responding to that for a year now. So that's why I don't respond to it anymore is I've addressed that. I addressed that so many times a year ago because that's when it was scandalous. The person that they're accusing me of getting the cat on Craigslist from is literally, literally told people no. People would contact her being like, did you sell to Taylor Nicole Dean? I love that kitten. And she'd be like, no. And she contacted me and she was like, excuse me, why are you telling people that you got my cat. I posted that conversation a year ago. People said I faked it. Again, you're gonna believe what you wanna believe. Her explanation of how she got ghost is ridiculous. It's illegal to adopt out kittens below eight weeks in Texas and no way would an unvaccinated kitten be in a petco, ready to be adopted. I also don't know what she means with the message and the Craigslist breeder. Someone on Lolkawa had contacted them and they literally said that they had already sold a kitten but they have some left. Now I want to talk about her slandering the breeder and Tristy's tail. I, people are constantly saying that I never apologized to them when I literally did months and months and months and months ago. I'll pull up the email here. People will probably say it's edited, but we had a conversation. I apologized forever ago to them. I'll be more careful and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that it made people so upset. I don't think anyone is giving her a hard time because she mixed up the breeders' names. People are upset over this situation because she never publicly talked about it to her fans or made the promised apology video. Because of that, the bad ratings that the breeder got weren't removed and they suffered business losses. She also did talk badly about the other bearded dragons that were being sold. She said that a lot of them looked unhealthy and hundreds of them were in a tub. She also let half of her bearded dragon's tail rot off, which just screams negligence. If one vet is giving you information and it's not getting better, then you just go to a different one for a second opinion. You could have found out by googling that cutting off a necrotic tail is possible even if the animal is still very young. It's as simple as that. If she had done that, then Twisty would still have his tail. I'm not sure how people can say that it's fine and that it's a mistake. A mistake is not letting your animal suffer for 8 months when it is so, so preventable. Now there is one story about me or my boyfriend smoking in the same room as my satanic leaf geckos. That's true, we did. I 100% thought I was being safe. I don't really smoke much ever, so I don't know much. I know this sounds really stupid, but I don't I don't know like, oh, you have to be this far or else it's still dangerous. Like I don't I don't know. I've seen people smoke in the same room as things before and I didn't understand how dangerous it was and I've definitely definitely researched now more about it and know never to do it again, but I did do it that one time. And I call huge bullshit on not knowing how bad it is to smoke in the same room as animals. That's not something you need to research, it's, it's simply something you know. 
I don't believe her when she says that they only did it once. If they thought it was normal enough to stream it, then I'm sure it happened before, even if only Johnny smoked and she didn't participate. He recently showed off that she got him vapes, and personally, I seriously doubt that he will go outside anytime he wants to smoke them. I don't want mean stuff being thrown around. So yeah, I do block people if I've answered something a million times, if people are being rude, if people are being aggressive about it, I do block it because I have extremely, extremely bad anxiety. I don't handle that kind of stuff well. I find it better just to separate myself from it. I'm sorry. I can understand her when she says that she doesn't want to answer the same questions over and over, but blocking people isn't the solution for that. It's different if it's mindless hate. But if people are telling her that her monitor's enclosure is too small and he needs one that's double the size he has right now, for example, then it's not hate, it's criticism, if anything. Even if it's annoying, she chose to have a public life. If she didn't want people talking about her bad animal care, then she could simply not show off that side of her life and only post pictures of her cute pets. But she chooses to make educational care videos with incredibly bad misinformation, so obviously people are going to look more into how she cares for her animals and tell her when she does something wrong. I'm so open to learning about animals, extremely. I always want the best for my animals. So for example, like one time I thought that I was gonna do quarantine with one of my animals in a bathroom and I was like, I'm gonna put the quarantine tank in my bathroom. And a lot of people were like, don't do that. That's not a safe spot to do quarantine. So I didn't do it. A lot of people were saying, hey, don't feed your rats anything with alfalfa in it. I stopped. A lot of people were telling me, hey, don't use red heat lamps about a year ago. I stopped. She should just know these things. You learn that kind of stuff when you research animals before you get them. It's embarrassing that she even needed to be told when her whole life revolves around taking care of her pets. I still think that she should follow Pickle's footsteps and rehome some of her animals and actually own up to her mistakes. Most of the things in this video weren't proper apologies. It was a lot of, I'm sorry, but. I'm not saying that I wouldn't also be defensive if I was in her situation, but I think that if she had a whole week to reflect and come up with a perfect response video, then she could have done a better job than simply saying, I love my animals and there is no proof that I'm mistreating them and I'm sorry for doing that, but... I have said it before and I will say it again. She could have shut down all of this drama by simply showing her pets in their enclosures right after people started calling her out. The fact that she still hasn't done that doesn't sit right with me. If you got this far, then thank you for watching. As I said in the beginning, I will probably not be very active in the comments I'll be making any other videos. I did read some comments this past week and I want to say thank you so much to everyone that said they support me and to my opinion. It means a lot to me and without all of you, I would have most likely already deleted my whole channel. So thank you. Again. <laughs>